What's good, everybody? What's good? Welcome back to yet another episode of Off the Strength, where we're giving you the inside look into all things wellness culture. I'm a trainer called Tony, and of course, with me, I got some gentlemen of extraordinary league guys. Let's go around the table and introduce ourselves, please. K.R. Jones is in the building. Good morning. Troy Brooks is in the building. Good morning. Your trainer, Corey, a.k.a. Master Corey, in the building as well. That's right. Folks, you know what time it is when we get the full squad in. It's going to be that variety hour where we're putting our best foot forward. So hopefully you do the same and you get your week off the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from near and far, we do have a little bit of housekeeping to get to right now because we got to tell these folks. We got to let them know. Wash ass. What happened throughout the course of this week? (laughs) Fellas. How y'all feeling about the live show? I'm going to totally ignore Corey as always. You know, he got a whole different type of situation. Yes. If you got to tell somebody that in 2019, you need to change your circle, bro. You got to get a whole new set of people that you're hanging this is, out this, with. Yo, this circle real, is large man. now. We're on microphones yo, now. Yeah, I don't know who you're hanging with. Yo. How y'all feel about the live set, man? What's going on? Ah, uh, the energy is live, man. The response has been so crazy. Um, a couple people sliding my DMs asking about y'all, by the way. Um, and we're not going to cater to that in any in any way. I am not here to play matchmaker, and I'm dead serious about that. This is not clout chasing. People have been hitting me up about y'all. Anyway. Okay. Um, right. The show has been phenomenal, man. I, 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 I love what we did. I think, uh, you know, the third part of this mindset movement series was amazing. Like I said, dude, I mean, in the rain, we had the shit packed out. You know, people came out. Uh, a lot of really good feedback about it. I'm still smiling, man. Mm. It was beautiful. Even in the rain, we still yeah. shined on them. No, it was a great time. Shout out to everybody that came. Uh, thank you, for sure, officially. Uh, we definitely had a packed house. The energy was great. The green room snacks was on point. Yo, Here I we go. Heated, though. The green room Yo, wasn't green. green room. I, that's yeah. part of my rider. The blue room snacks room was on green. point. Oh, do you need yeah. a green, green that's room? That's in my rider. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. man, I told you we was going to put a lot of people on notice, and I think they're starting to pay attention, fellas. This thing's been going on for a little bit, but before we start talking in that spiciness, I do want to go into Brother Jones's route, and I want to say some thank yous. So first and foremost, we got to yeah. thank Samsung 837. I want to say everybody on that staff, top to bottom, yeah. held us down mm-hmm. in a way in mm-hmm. which we made that thing rock the right way. So definitely, both the Laurens, Shout all the rest of the Laurens. Both <laughs> Lauren. The so, Lauren conglomerate was yeah. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they get together, it's great. So Yo. Shout out my to man them. who set up the photos upstairs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shout out to everybody. Him out. Shout that guy. Yes. Shout out to Yo. Edelman and Magnetic because yeah. uh, they held us down for Whole them. team doing yeah. visitors in. We love every single part of that. I got to say a special shout out to the homie Anthony Ferraro. Hope, ho- hopefully homie feels better soon. He's supposed to come yeah. through. I got to say a special shout out to Yamisi Clutch. The Clutch is Clutch. Yeah. <laughs> clutch came through in the Clutch and shut that thing down. Yeah. Shout out to the homie SRJ. Shout out to the homie Master Yoga Dan. Yeah. Shout out to Ed the Girl M Sugar. Yeah, man. Shout out to BJ. Shout out to Ricky Shubio. Shout out to Chef Prosper. Shout out yes. to the homie Flex. Pam Gold. Adam Greenfield. Miss T N King. Maria Diaz Holland. We had the pods pulling up. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Girl What Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Introverted Intuitions was up in there, man. We had the thugs. Yeah. We had the, the scientists. We had the hipsters. We had damn near everybody inside Shit. there. We had mothers in there. We right. had them all. All Yo, the mothers. Shout in there. out to the hug from Troy's mom. There we go. Yeah. There was so much love in that hug. Yeah. Made me miss my mama. Yeah, my mom's a really good hugger, man. Come I think on. I got that from her, too. She is. So she was in the building. My aunt was in the building. My Family nephews affair. were in the building. My mother in law was in the building. Sister in law in the building. And and some of them came from two fucking hours on the road to get to us, man. So, I mean, the love and support is real, uh, and that means a lot, you know. So, shout out to the fam for pulling up, too. Hell yeah. New York City, two hours might have been Harlem. Seriously. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In the city, I would be I remiss if I didn't shout out all four of my work wives pulling up. There we go. I don't, I'm not going to ask no questions on that, but shout out to all of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. All four of them <laughs> I don't know if they down are. that section, you know what I mean? I don't know, I don't know how you're moving, but I see Shout out moving. to y'all, you know? Yo, you know my mean? silence shout on the, that. Shout out to the unison. yeah. And the, uh, you know, the commemorative effort and the collaboration of all four of them getting Coming together, together and not having yeah, a beef course. at the show. I appreciate yeah. you not having the squad love. fight at the show, exactly. man. You know, that's what's up. It's love on this side. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what it's supposed to be about. <laughs> we had the partisan. You said you was going to make the wives meet the girlfriends, exactly. all the rest of that yeah. stuff. It's a family affair. It was all working in motion, handshaking and all. That's all right. how, see, that's how you know you are really a true networker when your wife and your girlfriend can hang out together and have a good time. Take selfies together. You know what I mean? All of that. We are changing the world one body and mind at a time, I guess, you know, but that's sometimes, how we did it. Sometimes three or four together. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 
It, oh, it's a, it's an interesting game of Twister whenever we pull up on the set is what we're trying to let y'all know. Have you ever you know? played co-ed naked Twister? That's so fine. anyway, I'd like to say yeah. thank you one more time to everybody that's in that spot. Um, again, Corey, you going on that boat by yourself, brother. Corey, I'm going to let you go ahead. It's not by yo, yourself. It's co-ed. Corey it requires other people. So, you're going to go very far by yo. yourself, brother. Corey was I, a, yo, you back in the days of Freak Nick, I guarantee he was the first person there. Definitely there. <laughs> Before they opened up, he was there. <laughs> Wait, it's you Wednesday? Got, you got the whole setup, bro. <laughs> it starts on Friday. I'm there Wednesday afternoon. Mm-hmm. Like, we ready? So, uh, I'm setting up. <laughs> we let them all know what was going down during the live set. Fellas, y'all had anything else of note going down throughout the course of the week? Y'all need to let these people know about. How was y'all inspiring after y'all got off the stage? Oh, man. The uh, the wellness cons- uh, consultations have been at an all-time high. So. Okay. Two new clients this week, man. So if you are in need of how to build your business, you're trying to take your fitness and wellness career to the next level outside of the scope of just training. Uh, you want to push beyond training, you know how to reach me, Troy at the TBEffect.com. Outside of that, if you want training, I can't help you. Sorry. But if you want to take your business to the next level, you know how to find me. Give me a gram as well. Props to that. Okay. Young uh, homie, what you got? I see you out here, brother. Yeah, man. Listen, uh, you know, they, the people are hitting me up. Do it. Hey, follow up. Gotta help them. Yeah. So I definitely went to uh, clear my mind a little bit yesterday with my with my team, and uh, we went axe throwing in Brooklyn. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. What's so the I, axe situation on? You know, I was out here axle foley, if you will. Nope. Single arm. Yo. <laughs> hitting the bullseye. No Don't ask me no questions because I'm an expert yet. after yeah. this. Uh, you, there know you, go. you know what I'm there saying? There you go. And uh, I was just out there, you know, doing what I do. My team won. We never lost. Always win. Uh Axe about me. Axe about him. Axe about him. Axe about him. Jones. All right. Corey, that hamstring is doing better this week. You had anything else you want to talk to people about? The hamstring is great. The mind is in a good place. There we Um, go. I've had some some really big breakthroughs with a couple folks I was talking about and talking to. If you need that training, feel free to hit me. I might not get you, but I can at least refer you. Props to that. You know, it's always going to be something special to make sure that you have those referrals and keeping everybody inside this space on the right track. And speaking of the right track, folks, let's get this goddamn train out the station. Let's get this thing in motion. Choo-choo! Since we're talking to the trainers, we might as well talk that trainer's trainer. Corey. Sir. What's going down this week in your trainer's trainer, fam? I want to talk about that push-pull, right? And we, when you talk push-pull, you usually talk about, you know, chest always, press and pull-ups always. and kind of things. But there's a, there's a give and take. There's an ebb and flow that has to come into what you do in your practice as a trainer. And one of the people who was asking the questions brought up the fact that how well, how much he was affected. I'm not going to go too deep into what he was saying, but how much he was affected as a trainer by what happens with his clients. And I want to talk to all of us about the fact that we have to find the line and the balance between how much we give and how much we take. Mm. There's a push pull within that. So you have to make sure that your push has a balance with your pull and you're never taking more than you can handle because you have other responsibilities. You have responsibilities to other clients. You have responsibilities to yourself. And sometimes more importantly, you have responsibilities to your family. You have other people who rely on you. So you can't give everything everywhere. Mm-hmm. You have to find that balance. So Troy, yo, as the man of balance over here, yo. as the man who handles the family and the business and the other business and the other business plus the business on the side. I'm on a tightrope, yes. blindfolded, juggling the world. How are you finding that balance, bro? <laughs> Uh, I, I think I, I, I find the balance. You know me, again, like I said, uh, at our podcast, I mean, our, at our live podcast, by just creating these boundaries, man, uh, drawing a line in the sand of not taking on too much, which is why I said earlier that if you need training, I can't help you because right now when it comes to that, my plate is a little bit full, and as I transition and phase out of that, I, I foresee a forecast of what I want for my life, and it doesn't involve that that component as much anymore. Um, like what you said earlier, I will. I mean, the other day, I will always move and be a practitioner of movement, but the business and the scope of what I want to do is much bigger than that. So I think I just kind of keep my eyes on the prize of what it is I want to do, and that allows me to give these hard no's, which are are a complete sentence. Right. Yeah. Uh, similar to what Sin was talking about, and with Brother Tone, I would like to say uh, in between. Um, a matter of I need to weed out the clients that aren't going to listen to me. So, like, if if you're not taking what I'm saying as gospel, if I'm not your fitness professional and you aren't taking what I'm saying to heart, then I can't work with you because mm-hmm. you are going to be my business card and I am going to be responsible for the outcome of what happens. So, with that being said, I would like to only move forward with people that I know are actually going to move forward. And if not, then I don't really have time to to coach you through it. I'm going to give you the tools. If you don't take them and I see you don't take them, then unfortunately I'm going to practice my non-attachment. Yeah. 
peace be with you. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, like, I'm I'm just not in a position to take on any more because I do have those yeah. boundaries. And if you aren't willing to move and go to that next level, then I can't help you. Yeah, that will be the smoothest way to ever be fired as a client, though. If, if it Kyle hits you with the peace be with you yeah. and just sends you out the door that way, like, this isn't working, but peace be with you. Yeah. I I have introduced people to new trainers. Yeah. Like on toward the end of a session, like yeah. here's a new person who's going to be taking over from now on. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, and walk away. Yeah, this ain't gonna work. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Super facts to that, man. Senior I, stoic. I think they all touched on most of the important parts inside of that. I don't know if I would even have anything um, robust to add to that. I would just say shout out to the homie Sin for definitely holding us down on that technical yes. side and adding a whole different type of flavor to that uh, space. I do uh, not want to forget him on that. His chill vibe, his chill vibe is a different chill vibe. He's got a different type of his chill. His rest made me tired. <laughs> yeah, man. He got a different Same. type of chill. But I say it, it comes back to that priority space, man. Um, not everything that sounds good is going to be the thing that you need to do at that moment. And I think a lot of people get fucked up on that aspect. Where it's like You can have a thousand good ideas happening right now, right? If you can't prioritize them, none of the stuff that you're actually investing in is going to f- be fulfilled. So you have to have a high level of scrutiny before mm-hmm. you decide to say yes to these things. Like, yeah. I know if y'all are having the same conversations that I'm having inside yeah. this space, a lot of stuff is coming down these pipelines, right? Yeah. Which ones are going to be the ones that you can execute first? I think that's the one that you should probably pay attention to. And then how can that clustering effect help all the rest of those things? Hopefully that takes you in the right direction. Word. You got to set your priorities. I hear that. So to wrap this up like a first date, Troy, once again, is telling you, you know, you're going to have to step back. If you want to get in, you have to get in where it falls in. Kyle is telling you, if you want to get in, you have to listen. So you either get down or you get away. Yeah. And Tony's always keeping it where that balance has to be is between what's going to work for me, what's going to work for you. Somewhere in the middle is going to be us or no one. Yeah. Depends on what that is. And the, the bottom line is it doesn't matter what you can put on your shoulders if you can't ha- hold that shit up. And you got to be honest with yourself and be able to say, you know what, I really, this might be a little bit too much that I can chew right now. You know, this is, it's okay to be like, you know what, this is probably not the thing. I need to k- kick this off. I need to pass this off to somebody else. It takes a level of sincerity and honesty with yourself that not a lot of people do reach. And when you're overworking, guys, you got to make sure that you take some time off. You got to make sure that you get that R and R inside here. And I know we've yeah. all been putting a lot of hustle inside here. So we got to kick this thing off in the next segment, which is ripped from the headlines. We're going to start with the good because, guys, I know we talking about this bag stuff. So if we talking about the bag, you know, getting to the money, we got to look at everybody mad. That's what I'm saying. We making them all mad. Listen, the wellness podcast out there is feeling the pressure. I'm yeah. trying to tell you right now. Foot on the neck. Well, they got to be knowing. It's like, yo, these dudes did what in the rain? That shit was crazy, dog. Yeah. You know? Um, but if we're moving towards the money, we got to check out the Rob Report. That's where the real big spending is happening. I don't know if y'all guys is on Two that. Bees. Yeah. Two B's on that, Rob. Uh, the Four Seasons has transformed one of their Hawaiian hotels into a the first ever five-star adults-only wellness retreat. Now, tech billionaire owner Larry Ellison has reimagined the lodge in Keoli. Sorry, my uh, Hawaiian pronunciation is a little off, but Keoli as a hub for his well being company, Sensei, uh, complete with a brand new concept uh, and restaurant brought to you by Nobu. Okay? Fellas, the concept is a hotel that has all of the different bells and whistles inside this wellness space that we can get to, right? Now, I wanted to bring this up because, hey, I feel like I'm a little overworked. Mm-hmm. I feel like I could use a little R&R. Mm-hmm. And they look like they need some booking over here inside this whole space. So if you had to make a pitch, let's say, to Larry Ellison right now on what an OTS wellness luxury weekend would look like, I think that listeners need to hear that from you guys. Mm-hmm. If you had to let them know. Again, this is five-star resorts type, type thing, fellas. You know, whether you want to come through to relax, you want to take a nice little dip in the pool, you know, you want to get some of these outdoor spa treatments. Mm-hmm. They even have areas for you to get your philanthropic endeavors on. You know, if you want to give back while you're on vacation, he's hitting you with that. Listen, the billionaires and the tech guys is trying to give you a destination to relax, get that R&R in here. How y'all feeling about that? And can we make a pitch to, uh, to Larry right now? Let me jump on that real quick. Well, first off, if you're talking about experience and it requires expertise, obviously the expertise lies here. Mm. So if you are looking for getting an experience that's going to give you that high end, because obviously we know what high end is. Yeah. Check out Troy Bus. Yeah. Check out Troy's wrist real quick. <laughs> 
if you want to know what it's like to get your proper fitness in in an effective and efficient amount of time and then turn around and know how to properly recover because we do know how to R&R it. Both those R's are well and deep in our, in our souls. Mm-hmm. We will get that in. Get the experts, get the right experience, and then get the fuck out. Hell yeah, man. We addressing that gap between wellness and your daily practices out here. Y'all fellas got something y'all want to pitch on this one? <clears throat> you know, I mean, if you need a, a yoga teacher to come through as the spiritual advisor of the Off The Strength Podcast, I feel like, you know, what's wellness without some mind-body-spirit connection? Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like that's they something that, say it. that we provide, you know? So, I mean, hey... <clears throat> Cut Let them know. <laughs> exactly. Cut the check. <laughs> I would actually prefer just the deposit. Don't worry about the check. You know? <laughs> people are on notice. The business is open, fellas. That's what I'm trying to let people know. We, we want to make sure that we're definitely providing the vibe, right? So, exactly. you know, we definitely want to give that work hard, play hard, and kind of teach people how to create the, the balance of being okay with doing something that naturally just feels good for you mentally, right? So having a nice cocktail, maybe having a nice meal, breaking bread around a beautiful table, maybe a nice communal table right on the beach, right on the water. Toes are kind of right on the waves, so the waves are crashing on your feet. It's a private While you're whining and dining. Yeah, but you got to earn that after one of your classes. Of course, of course. But we got to teach the work hard, play hard. You know, there's people who don't have balance. They just work hard, work hard, work hard. So they can't work no more. And then you got people who play hard, play hard, play hard without the work hard, right? Mm-hmm. So if we can get them to find that balance of, you know, deposits and withdrawals, they're making the right investments. All right. So, Larry, check this out, fam. The good folks over at the Off the Strength podcast said we're open for business. If you need some sauce in that private island that you got down there, check us out, homie. <laughs> we're trying to pull up. Yeah. Let everybody know. They got on notice, man. All right. So we got to transition out of the good. To the maybe good, I'm going to look at this one next. Um, <laughs> it's not quite bad. It's, 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 Good-esque. It's, 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 it's in the ballpark, <laughs> it's, eh, right? Eh. Like- People be making a lot of claims, man. I try to understand this, right? So now we've heard of Mirror. We talked about Brendan on here before, and we're trying to understand. Um, a couple weeks back, Mirror launched their one-on-one uh, home personal training app. Um, so Mirror, for those who might not know, is a delivery system that hangs up on the wall inside the houses, and it kind of, exactly like the name says, looks like a mirror, but it, it acts as a delivery system, so you can download workouts, you can stream different things, and you can keep up with it. It's a big-ass tablet. It kind of is, but it does a little bit more than that. It's, it's pretty beautiful looking, though. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sleek, it it's clean to the yeah. wall. I mean, Brent, I ain't got no space for that shit in my crib in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> so. so you might not be inside that uh, Target demo. Inside <laughs> I got space for mine, so feel free to send me yeah, one so I can give you a review. Pull up, man. So the in-home <laughs> workout has taken literally 2019 by storm i don't know if you guys are buying into it but a lot Mm -hmm. of people are and they have been looking through that i've seen a bunch of trainers that i know doing the group exercises yeah uh and making that a decent amount of side coin off of there you know um but now mirror saying that they're trying to make personal training affordable and this is why i said it's kind of in that maybe space right Mm -hmm. um here is why i gotta ask if this is good or not okay so at 40 dollars per person 30 minute sessions for personal training they're saying that they're radically undercutting what a typical session is inside a gym yes that is totally true right because typically bottom end of a personal training session what you guys say is probably like in that hundred bucks a little bit more inside that space okay they're launching this as an economic uh, economic solution for personal training but the cost of this thing all in is about fifteen hundred dollars plus a thirty nine dollar thirty nine dollar a monthly subscription and you have to add on to this other forty dollars for the personal training inside that space, right? Plus Ooh. shipping and handling. Plus shipping and handling, installation, all and the rest of these things. And, so and there's actually no handling because there's no one there. To don't forget about form insurance. Form to help you. They have to get well. You have to get it mounted the right way because yeah. if it's not mounted at the right height, mm-hmm. you can't one see yourself in the proper reflection, and then two, they can't really give you that same uh, you know feedback because mm-hmm. they they are looking at you for the personal training sessions, right? So all in, this is going to cost you somewhere around seventeen hundred dollars with a reoccurring subscription of that, let's say ninety. Is this actually something that's an affordable option? What y'all think on that? Well, affordable is a relative term. That's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. So depending on what you consider to be affordable, I mean, you're talking about putting a giant tablet in somebody's home and having a reoccurring fee attached to it. You're not talking about average demographics financially. You're talking about a whole different. High class. Type of, yeah, you're talking about people who would also be all, already be paying for personal training. Mm-hmm. So when you compare it to personal training, yes. But it's also a thing of what are you getting from it? Are, you're, are you going to there, – there's a hands-on aspect. There's, a per, there's an artistry level that comes from personal training. And there's some things that you do personally when you are physically there, overcoming 
injuries that you're not aware of. Yep. Different, and I understand you can partially connect form, but there's other things involved with your form, like what muscles you were engaging, and I don't know how you could possibly tell how what muscles you're engaging internally, especially what part of your core you're using, based on looking at your posture. Good verbal cueing only goes but so far. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It can work really well in a group environment, but when you're definitely working in a one-on-one -on -one environment, like you definitely want to be able to have that hands-on application, like you said. Like even if you're doing someone's breathing, like if you're teaching somebody to 360 breathe diaphragmatically, you just want to be able to place your hands on them and, and feel the expansion of their rib cage and how they're engaging. You can't do that from a screen. You know what I mean? Uh, I think the other thing is, is that fee, is that $1,300 fee an annual fee, or is that a no, one-time? that's a, a one-time so device. 50, yeah, yeah, that's the device fee plus mm -hmm. the installation is yeah. going to be somewhere around that, let's say, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600. Yeah. Um, then the $40 for your personal training mm -hmm. or just the regular $39 for their class subscription yeah. is going to be inside there. So that's probably like an $80 a month subscription that you have coming back and forth. So I'm going to be there. really real. I think, I, think, uh, I think there's a gift and a curse to this thing. You spoke about AI before and how this shit's sure. taken over, right? And we've also argued about the hands-on physical practical component of being a trainer and how important both of those things are. The real deal here is it's only so long that people do shit in their home. You just can't do it in your home for long. I know 17 people who have Peloton bikes that are, their fucking cobwebs are starting to grow on the bike. The reality is you might do it for two, three weeks, and then you just don't do it anymore. I have a gym in my building. I don't use a gym in my building. I have to go out to, to Lifetime to that gym to get the workout, and I'm just not going to do my building. I have kettlebells in my house from 40, 4 kg all the way up to 32. When I was on my grind, grind, grind trying to change my life, I had time to do that. But the reality is people just don't do that consistently in their home. So it's only so long that you actually are going to be able to stick to that thing before you want to go into another space. I, and I know that to be true. That's just my opinion, but I've also walked the walk. You it's know? one of those things that the tech is new, but it's a modern-day VHS, right? Yeah. So you could have always worked out at home in some way, shape, or form, right? It's just the delivery system that changes. And I know their delivery system a little bit better because I know all the things that they're doing. I think fitness yeah. is the first problem that you see them solving. Mm -hmm. Know that there's going to be a lot more with this delivery system. Oh, I know, what, they're, I know different... what I think they're moving into. There's a lot of applications yeah. that make sense for you looking in a mirror and somebody doing something exactly. with you, right? So without going too deep into that side, the efficacy of it comes back into the play where, okay, if I'm not in a major urban area and I'm way out in the sticks because we got a lot of money and I could be away from everybody, yeah, it's going to be really hard for me to get into my, like, prime time, you know, 6 p.m. class yeah. way back in the city. I got to yep. travel three hours over here mm -hmm. to get back. Nah, I ain't trying to do that. Can I bring them here? Yeah, you could, but it might cost you a lot. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a stopgap in between those two options, right? So either you're bringing your high-level personal trainer inside your space which if there's anybody in this room i know it's gonna cost you some dollars yep. and if they don't physically want to be here i think that that's where that kind of lives inside that space but yeah I, I would never look at tech to solve every single problem and that brings us right into this next aspect because i gotta ask some questions again fellas all right so now i was completely unaware that they make fitness trackers for kids i did not know that that was an actual thing wearables coming inside here um i saw in the chicago tribune they're listing the best kids fitness trackers okay so these fitness trackers are out here encouraging children um just like they encouraged adults on that side so to get up move around you have avatars that are going to make you feel a little bit more animated you know you get to unlock different achievements move around and this is obviously an attempt to curtail what the obesity epidemic was bringing about right um, these fitness trackers are tethered to apps that the adults can look at and try to monitor and see if your children are moving around. I got to ask some questions when we're starting to put more data points on kids, and this is why it's in that. Okay, we hit the good, we hit the bad. Is this ugly, fellas? I don't know how I feel about this. The watches are fairly inexpensive. They range from, I'd say, about $40 to up to 100 One of the devices of note that they uh, go through and listing inside of this article is the Vivo Fit Junior by Garmin which has Disney characters licensed, Marvel, and all of the sort, so they can make sure that the kids are locked in and see, okay, you know, all right, Superman is now doing this, you know, or Batman, you know, whatever. Those are all DC characters, but you get what I'm saying. With target demos from preschool all the way through middle school, what do you guys feel about kids getting involved in this tech fitness thing at this early of an age? Give me some thoughts on that. Would you use any of these monitors? I feel like I got to go to Troy first on that because he's the only one that has a kid. Oh, yeah, so here's the deal, man. Uh 
kids are in front of screens all the time anyway, right? Like, I look at, like, these moms or, like, you know, I'll go on a date night with Chantel, and I'll see kids out with their parents, and the kid's just plugged in front of an iPad. They're like, yo, I don't care what the kid's listening to. Just going to plug this kid in front of the iPad so that we can have an adult experience, an adult conversation. Kids are on iPhones. Kids are on all these different things, and, and a lot of the things they're doing are not active. So is it? do I want all the, the devices and shit on them all the time? Absolutely not. But do I? Would I love to see that a kid is outside actually moving? That the kid maybe had the fucking vivo on. The kid's running around, did something, trip, fell, and scraped their knee, and actually has like a, a, br- a bruise on their knee. Like yeah. these kids these days look too good to me. Like you, you were never outside because you're stuck behind an Xbox or a PlayStation or something in that fashion. So for kids to have this and kind of get out there and move and have goals, attainable goals, to set to move. I definitely commend that, you know, yeah. that part of it. So you need to do at least 60 minutes of activity to unlock the game features on there. Mm-hmm. That's what I was trying to see. So 60 total minutes in a day, you'll get the new avatar. you get to see, you know, your favorite character doing whatever it is that they have you doing on that side. Corey, what do you have on that? I, I think it's a great setup in the fact that it's giving kids motivation to move, like Troy was saying. And it's, it's, it's taking advantage of what their culture is already set for. But at the same time, it doesn't replace parenting. It doesn't replace personal connection. We continuously Absolutely. warn each other as adults to make sure we're disconnected. So going in and further connecting your children and teaching them can, that level of connectivity early can be harmful. So I would be aware of it. Absolutely. But I think I think everything we've talked about so far could be good provided it's being monitored properly and taken care of the yes, right sir. way. Um, I think if we're going to talk about childhood obesity, then you have to talk about the overarching issue of how parents are raising these kids, right? Like, what are you feeding them? You are the one that's in control control of their life. So if you're not actively playing with your kids, going out, providing opportunities for them to move, then, of course, they're going to be obese. Like, don't spend that money on technology. Spend time with your child being outside. If you don't have time to spend with your child, then that's just something that you need to dive into. It's yeah. not going to come from a wearable technology. Now, granted, being able to track it, I mean, in theory, it sounds like a good idea. But the reality is I feel like if you don't provide that opportunity for your child to move, it doesn't matter what you give them. That 60 minutes ain't getting unlocked if they ain't using it. The, the, aware, the aware parenting component of that is could be really good, right? Like, think about it like this. Like, if I'm a fit parent, my wife's a fit parent, we use wearable technology. Our kid is modeling our behaviors. Yeah. We get them a little wearable technology now. And that wearable technology is pretty cool because, like it says, you have to work hard in order to play. To get right? the play, So in order yeah. to get the play, you, you, it's showing them the positive behaviors. And then, again, like you said, the parents have to have to have now reaffirm, hey, listen, in order for you to play, you got to put in that time. Let's go out there. Let's go. And now you could take that time as a family and kind of connect as a family and make that, that movement more of a family-based thing. And that's the thing that I yeah. love about it, right? Because yeah. it does incorporate your whole tribe being a part of this thing hey we're all bought into this thing it's going to be well and good but i also have to know coming from the space that i know hey we all right now have about seventy thousand data points that are just floating out there for people to market to and if i'm licensing my material to big companies somebody else other than you is paying attention to that information i don't know if i want my kid to have information out there before they're really ready for that world World. i don't want you gathering information on a toddler up until the time that i'm an adult because then that seventy thousand that they have on us is going to be you know, yep. you're talking about billions of points of information on you. How can you be manipulated on that line? And you're that's a very real thing. Sold by the time you hit middle school. Because you're already indoctrinated to it, right? So it's a longer prescription. We had a whole childhood where yeah. people didn't know what the hell we was doing. And there's some good stuff that happened with that. There's some bad stuff. But if somebody had their fingerprint on you from day one mm-hmm. all the way up until the time you became an adult, think of how they can influence you. Think of how they can move you. Think of all that different stuff. And I can't not see that. Mm-hmm. So I got to call it out when I hear it, man. And folks that's going to be it from this rip from the headlines please watch for closing doors make sure you pay attention to all of this craziness out here i'm trying to set people up for these wins troy yeah yeah man i want them to win every single day out here man man. win Win win, win 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 some of y'all gonna fuck lose. everything else some all you gotta do is win all you, you gotta win, do is win, win. win. that's nope. what we try to some do some of y'all gonna lose get ready <laughs> don't Yo, Don't so think listen, everybody you, going you, you, you might lose, but let's try to set these people up with the uh, best information that we can so that hopefully they can get that W. Put them and up. Not, and not take the L. Yo, after our show, man, we had a, in a crazy, amazing show. And after the show, we got to uh, connect Bill, eat food, and chill with a lot of our, you know, some allies, some friends of the show, uh, family, things of that nature. And I had walked by and got a hard shoulder bump, and I felt like I walked into a brick wall. And I, it wasn't a brick wall. It just happened to be our, our man Flex. They call him that for a reason. Yeah, exactly. He was flexing. He wasn't even flexing. He's, He's just, just flexing. He's just chilling. <laughs> Chiz Khalifa was this there. 
And I was like, yo, Flex, what up, man? What's going on? He's like, yo, how you been? You look good. And I said, listen, man, I'm here, but I'm fucking tired. I'm sleep deprived. I keep it real with you. I've been setting some fitness goals for myself that I've been trying to hold myself accountable to. And I'm not going to lie to you. I'm plateauing a little bit. I need to call in on a friend. Let's go. Can we get it in? He said, yo, tomorrow. I said, okay, what time? He said, yo, can you make this time? I said, say less. I showed up. I tried to glow up, not throw up, <laughs> but throwing the bows up. To get these chin-ups, pull-ups, uh, deadlifts, and everything that we got in, man. We had a really fucking amazing session. I walked out of the Angolati where I had the shakes. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get that workout in where your in lip. You know what? That's the kind of workout I got in. They but, move, but, man. but to keep it real with you, I got home late. You know what I'm saying? I took the mm-hmm. Uber, shout out to them, to the train, got home. I'm in bed by 12 o'clock, but I have to get up at 4.30. Sage woke up in the middle of the night. I got him at 2.30, so I'm really not sleeping. Then I teach a 6, a 7, a 8. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not, I don't have any food, so I grab a quick banana, double shot of espresso. So I run over there. So I was a little bit depleted, but the point is that I said I'm going to do something. I had to show up, I had to pull up, and I had a high level of accountability to myself. And I'm not going to lie to you, I felt like a better man for it. And now we're going to do this thing every Tuesday and Thursday. We're going to break bread like that. Uh, we're going to build a little mastery of the mind. I'm going to call it kingship. When two mm-hmm. kings or three kings or four kings can get together, we're talking shit. We're, we're visionary thoughts, but we're also sweating. So I want you brothers to come pull up. A lot of love to him for that. But the, the main thing about this is I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, I fell off. Uh, and but I had to pick my boots up. You know what I'm saying? I had to get myself by the bootstraps, reconfigure myself, and try to figure out what it is I need to do. So I wanted to hold myself to this standard of accountability and say, you know what? I fell off a little bit, but I need to get back on. And I think we all do that. So, Corey, I'm going to ask you, um, because you are the man who is open enough and vulnerable enough to be honest and say, hey, listen, you know what? I fell off, but I got to get myself back on. Where are we with that? And um what are you doing to make sure that you stay consistent in these practices right now that you got going on? I actually, I'm actually in a, in a better place this week. I, it, it, I seems to be working, um, re, re, reconfiguring my schedule so that I can, you know, get it in during smaller periods of time and being a little more efficient with my time. And I'm getting like small breaks in. Mm-hmm. I've also gone from having a recovery day, changing my schedule, not being able to have that, mm-hmm. and then having recovery times and having multiple times throughout the course of the day where I just stop, mm-hmm. stretch breathe and sit just yeah. sit down give myself a moment of time by myself because most of my break time comes at like two in the afternoon when some everybody else is doing something you know so that's i take that time to like chill and bring myself you've down. also been setting some boundaries because we were supposed to go to a rooftop last week and you hit me with a hard try i nope. love you I like, but i gotta go to sleep right I now go. i have i have been cutting <laughs> things off and going to bed nice nice yeah. nice uh, Kyle, you've been moving, you've been shaking. It seems like you've been really into your practice of movement, man. Have you been consistent with that? And if you have, like, how have you been able to cons- be consistent with that with your busy schedule? Um, I have been consistently inconsistent. There we go. Uh, uh, brother I Tone appreciate can, the truth, No, nah, Brother Tone can attest to this for sure. And I just feel like I, at this point in my life, there's so many moving things that's yeah. happening. And um, movement is very much still a part of my life. I just make sure that I'm guaranteed to move mm-hmm. at least three times a week, and I get the most out of those three times a week. Like, I make them count. So with the the yoga teacher training, I'm guaranteed to move every Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. I know that's a guarantee. Now, throughout the week, it's like, all right, where can I set up? Where can I find this opportunity? Bam, Wednesday's my day. Wednesday, I have it on the calendar. I go after it. I get to it. And for the other days that I can't move, it's not that – just because I'm not in the gym doesn't mean I'm not moving. Absolutely. So, like, when I bike, I, I bike to work or, you know what I mean, I take the scenic routes. So I bike on these good days when it's still sunny and mm-hmm. I can move. When I'm hitting them stairs, I'm skipping steps. You know what I'm saying? I'm it's, Grandma's getting nuts. Grandma's getting the shoulder. <laughs> I'm skipping <laughs> steps. like and, Terrible. And that's the way that I, I – or I'll take a walk. Like, the other day or not even the other day, yesterday, like, yeah. I got up with one of the homies and – the the direction was like, yo, take the subway, then hop on the bus. It's like, yeah. nah, I'm a walk. So I it took is. this extended 15, 20 minute walk to get to where I need to be. So it's still about finding the opportunity to move and prioritizing, but capitalizing on those times when I am there. Mm-hmm. And that's just kind of how it works. And then 
when me and Brother Tone can get back on his full body karate. Listen, we're going to give him the real story one day of what happened to full body karate, but <laughs> you still know, a white you belt. Know, he still got. Yeah, I'm definitely still a white so, belt. He so. got a whole constituency that he had at the show that might have to answer to why he can't make these full body karate oh, situations. Man. Oh. But we're not going to get into that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I see what you did there. I said constituency, my I friend. I see what you did. So, so. My concubines. <laughs> wow. See, you put yourself he out put there. Himself out there. Yeah, he laid that out he there. He put himself out there. <laughs> They're getting that at hotline. <laughs> Shit. No, they honey call yourself out. Oh, I, I knew why it wasn't happening, but I ain't saying yeah, why it he, wasn't. He's happening. trying to get into a different record, kind of body karate out here. Tony man. set him up nicely. Yep, he decided yep. to do that. He decided to jump off that ledge on his own. Tony tried to back Listen, him off. Just, Tony, <laughs> Tony said, hey man, the ledge is right there. He said, Don't Oh, I, you want me to oh, jump, you jump? You want me to jump here? Yeah. I'm Listen, jumping. No cape. So 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 the uh the mindset is still movement. In Mindset some, is still in some capacity, um, <laughs> and, and movement is still medicine. So, Tony, I ask you, uh, spef- specifically uh, looking at movement as medicine, uh, do you still find time to make sure that you're giving yourself the right dosages these days? Because I feel like when it comes to you, man, the plate is heavily, heavily full. Yeah. And sometimes these meetings are starting outside of parameters, man. Are you still setting these boundaries out here to make sure that you still make this movement a thing? Uh, consistent practice for you that's then, the only way that this shit works man yeah. to be honest with you like you heard you hit me yesterday and i was walking out yeah. from one place to the next because i have to be in that space right i have to the only way i can keep all of this craziness up top like really solid yeah. is by getting these practices in so yeah. that might mean that my day has to start early or it might have to end late like last yeah. night was a fucking back-to-back kind of day coming off our live show hosted another thing last night was jumping from hoboken to the city where you yeah, see yeah, me yeah. get my teeth yeah. clean all the rest of that kind of stuff just moving around started the day in williamsburg i'm taking these meetings yeah. but hey you're gonna walk with me yeah. a couple miles is, is that all right because if we got to talk we got to talk this business i still need to do this thing that makes me just as good mm-hmm. for you you got to catch me on on this side or we're gonna pull up to you know, my man spot and get a workout in while we're having this Absolutely. meeting. Absolutely. Or we're going to go, you know, whatever the case is, movement has to be that medicine. It has to be a part of this thing. And that's what people are investing in. You have to know why we got to meet on these spaces, you know. And it's it's constantly in circle. This, the wheel on this thing is moving. And I got to keep moving with it to make sure that everything is going in the same direction. Yeah. Say this shit again. Say it again. The <laughs> wheels on the bus go round and round. Simple <laughs> children's song. But if you pick up what we're putting down... You're going to fucking grow up. You're going to glow up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to show up. And if you show up, you'll definitely grow up. Fam, you a dad like a motherfucker. I'm a daddy. He's a nursery rhyme. I'm a daddy. Yo, yo, I'll be listening. So I listen to these shits now. Because I listen to them now, I'm like, yo. There's some life lessons in here. And some of these shits is (laughs) wild. on a bus do go round and round. Some of them are crazy. Some of them are wild racist. There's a lot of them out there. These shits are different. Don't go too far back. Don't go too far back, bro. Hey, watch what you grab him by the toe. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want none of that. Yo, listen, man. Corey is he's rising to the occasion he's keeping his vulnerability out there he's being open and communicative with himself he's a truth talker and seeking that truth through this entire thing so we commend him for that brother jones is out here making sure that he is moving might be moving on your girl you never know we're gonna make sure the streets are but the pelvic are, floor is strong the streets are exactly the streets of gowanus his are a little shaky my right bondage now. are engaged okay yeah, you know what i mean that's that yoga term for you and right as you can see, <laughs> my bondage that's what oh, you need to don't know your hands okay, off my there bondage. We go. don't All ever right. tell me about I'm your bondage i'm just not man. trying to bond with I'm y'all like this right now can we stop with the bonding i don't want no bondage so i can wrap this thing up just make sure you wrap it up when you're bonding whenever you're getting the bondage yeah please Wrap it up. <laughs> and the good brother Tone is making sure that no matter what, the days might be long. Uh, the days might start earlier, but he's making sure that this mindset and this movement is a continued praxis, a continued praxis. So that's what it's all about, man. Hopefully you are taking what we are giving you. You are picking up what we are putting down, and you are polishing that crown. How that sound? Hey, it all should right. sound good. There it bars. Is. Peace and sound. love. If we talking bars, we got bar talk. <laughs> Listen. You know what, what time it is, it, man. man. That's it. What up? Keep setting that table, homie. Come <laughs> on. What's this bar talk coming in here? You, you going to get the, the lyrical exercise. Let's play. get it. So my lyrical exercise is definitely taking another turn today. For better or worse, it's going to be on y'all to decide. We're going to take a... We're going to take a step into my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. we're going back. We're going back. So in this beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, we have curse words. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Ah, you see that, right? Yeah. You see what I did there? Yeah, it is. So now I'm taking it back to, I was watching Top Boy on Netflix, right? It's my shit, bro. So what, the officially it came out in like 20, 2011, right? Mm-hmm. 
And that's when Drake saw it. And this is the same time that Drake dropped, if you're reading this, it's too, it's too late. late. And remember when we were like, yo, why is he doing all this London? Why is he doing all these these London words? It's because he was watching Top Boy on Netflix at the time, but nobody gave a fuck about Netflix. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to him buying it, and then they remade it and finished it. And now that's where most people are caught up now watching a new version of Top Boy, but there's an older one on Netflix as well, too. So that's the little Drake anecdote. That's where you get all the London slang and shit. So I'm watching it. It's a lot of bruvs. Like, oh, I'm calm, bruv. It was good, bruv. bruv. Ting in it. It's a wild ting. You know, it's wild ting <laughs> in it, you know? So I'm like, yo, I really love the the London curse words. Mm-hmm. Like, the fuck off. Like, yeah, you know what I yeah, mean? It, yeah. There's yeah. energy in it that's different. It's energy in it. And it's they say, a different and they energy. Say, come on, man. Piss off, bruv. Piss off, bruv. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I feel it. It ignites my soul. So then it takes me all the way back to when I was in college. And in college, we had a professor, Dr. Sphere. You remember Dr. Sphere? Not at all. So Dr. Sphere <laughs> took this seven-year sabbatical. And in the seven-year sabbatical, one of the things that he was studying was the effects of cursing while you work out. I do remember that study. You yeah, remember that, sure. right? So I was a part of it. So literally, you be in the gym and like you lifting up some heavy weight, you just got... You just got to let that sh- fuck off. You know what I mean? You got to let it out real quick. But don't throw a plate. Like you, you threw two plates. Just yeah, yeah just I might have threw two plates. Call into but somebody in the gym. <laughs> ultimately, it, it just got my mind going. And, and I just wanted to get your gentleman's take on when you're in the gym, you getting that heavy weight off. Are you cussing? Like, what's, what's getting you to that next level? Like, you just worked out with Flex. So yeah. tell me tell me what got if, you if, above the line. If you literally go to the video on my Instagram page, which I'm going to make sure I deliver to you guys, because I think we should put that on the Off The Strength page for sure, just so cats can see how we moving with the fellow uh, people on the show. I was cursing. Straight up like that. Like, you got to get it out. You put in that work, you just got to get it out. I had a hard couple fucks. I had a hard couple fuck no's. Mm-hmm. I had a, yo, you, you got to be fucking kidding me. And then even in my classes, man, just because I do curse, like I'm trying my hardest not to. I owe Chantel about $5,000 in the dollar jar. <laughs> uh, but that's just in me. That's just who I am. You know what I mean? I'm slightly aggressive. Um, I'm a true Yorker, and it's just, it's just it's who I am. I curse even in my classes, man. I think that it brings off a rawness. It brings out an authenticity. Um, we come from that, and, and I think it, it comes off. And if the right people do it in the right way, it comes off authentic. Hell yeah, You know what man. I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm a cursing motherfucker. Fuck you if you don't feel the way. I try Fuck to make off. sure. I, I <laughs> Piss off. Like, I feel like. Piss off, bro. Piss off, bro. I try to make sure that I reserve it for the times that you know I actually mean it. So yeah. you don't hear it a lot of time. But when we talk yeah. about like yoga journal, yeah, yeah. fuck them. Nah, yeah. That's how I feel about that. Don't think we forgot. Pressure's still on yeah, you. Yeah, fuck y'all. <laughs> um, but inside that same space, like uh, I'd say shout out to the whole troop of squad, j Row, Prince, and Flex. Yeah. When I seen Flex come inside and he was knocking out the one-on pull-ups, I yeah. definitely was like, fuck no. I yeah. ain't doing that shit. <laughs> So you can hold that down. Tear a whole bicep out here, fam. A whole bicep. Yo, what's up, fam? You trying to get these? Sipping an ISO pure, looking me in my uh, eyes. <laughs> we did so many muscle ups yesterday. It just doesn't make That's sense. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, so. yo, who's even programming muscle ups right now in today's program? Them dudes. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> just cause. He's like, nah, we doing we doing negative sets on these. Son, today. we gonna warm up with advanced shit. Can't even lie to you. He had learned something new with the technique, and then like implemented it into me to make sure that we weren't flaring the ribs and kipping. And it was just it changed the shit for me. Like I went from thinking I was doing so many great muscle ups to doing sets of like three to four, but the quality over quantity. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's great when you can get with these other professionals that are like minded and come into a room open and receptive to learn, and you just leave so much better. You know? Of course, brother Corey, what you got, man? I know that hamstring was was pulling at you. The way the way I lift is a little more a little different, like it's a little more deliberate. So my fucks come when I'm casual, like when I'm chilling. You get you hear all my fucks. When I'm actually upset, I'm real calm and everything is very strategic on what I'm saying. That's why you don't see me upset very much. I treat lifting the same way. I'll be cursing and shit when it's like light. When I'm doing work, I'm breathing. I'm quiet. I'm not talking. That's why when I get it in with other people. Then I'm like having a good time and I'm playing around. When I'm really doing work, I'm quietly by myself yeah. listening to Frank or Nina and just doing my work. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm silent. I'm just breathing. I'm not cursing. I'm You're not, not nothing, getting I'm off breathing. this Frank Sinatra, brother. I'm not yeah. giving it to you. But <laughs> it ain't nothing to give. It's, it's my shit. I'm taking it. Yeah, you can't give me like my that. shit. That's his vibe. So I'm going to wrap all this up way. with uh, nothing crazy really dropped this week, but my man, Big Goo Gucci Man LaFleur dropped uh, Waptober 2. Wow. Yeah, I know. That so that great The name. two tracks that I mentioned on our last episode, uh, Tootsies and Big Booty is on there with a gang of other Gucci Man shit. So go out there, support that man, Gucci. That's all I got. Lyrical exercise. Ooh. Ooh. 
let them know. Uh, and the ad libs is back in here. See, Sin Burr. started us off on these ad libs, and now they going crazy. <laughs> they done gone all the way up. I'm gonna let y'all do the ad libs. Yeah, nah. <laughs> don't, my man don't take say his. Don't take his his ad lib. <laughs> we will not insert that into this space. <laughs> Corey, what's going Are on with Monsex? Check week? over the Yuhu. Still the Yuhu in there. <laughs> we not doing. We not doing Sin's lips. That's a wild one. You right gotta let him rock. Bro. That's What's up with mind sex this week, fam? All right, I'm going to dive into some personal shit right here. So I was I was doing a photo shoot the other day and running through Brooklyn, going to different spaces, trying to get the different looks in the background and all that shit. Shout out to Troy Brooks when I had that conversation with you about what I should be doing. First thing he told me was take more pictures, get content. So I did that. Nigga, I've been Creators you, create, bro. I listen to you all the time. That's not your lane. Remember what, so, I, said, remember what I told you? <laughs> people want to hear shit from certain people, people man. People want to hear certain shit from certain people at certain times. <laughs> So here's the real talk. Nah, for, for real though, Kyle has been talking that too. Yeah. But the what I was doing when I was in those spaces is I started looking around me. And we forget how beautiful our fucking city is sometimes. Word. Like I'm out here, I'm looking at the water, I'm on trees, I got a handball court by me. It was crazy. I turn around, there's another basketball court, there's a bunch of heads in one place, a bunch of heads in the other. And I took the time to just look at where I was and just appreciate the space I'm in, appreciate the place I'm in in the right. world. Appreciate the love I've been getting, yeah. the love we've been getting, and it was a, it was right then the day after we did our live show, and I was in the process of me trying to do this shoot. I go back, open up my phone. I've been hit up from a few people, people reaching out, people just saying thank you for certain things, yeah. and I I just I felt that moment like the appreciation that was out there and how much I appreciated being here, mm -hmm. and sometimes we forget to reflect on the work, we yeah, forget man. to reflect on what we did to get here. Yeah, we got all this stuff ahead of us. Yes, we have so much to overcome. Yeah. We're like at the middle of the staircase and you see the top. Mm -hmm. Don't forget about all those steps you took to Absolutely. get here. Don't forget about what was behind you. And don't forget about the beauty around you. Brooklyn is the prettiest place on earth to me. Such and a beautiful place, bro. You look around, there's, there's, there's city, there's broken down, there's built together, there's renewal, there's rejuvenation, there's life, there's love, there's crazy food. Mm -hmm. And all these things are around and... I'm point A, point B all the time. I forget. I gotta, I'm hopping on the A train. I'm hopping on the L. I'm doing all these things instead of looking around and seeing these streets yeah. and seeing what's really around. Yeah. So what I want to challenge y'all to do is look around these streets and be in the moment that you're in mm -hmm. and experience what's going on around you. Yeah. You know? Troy. Yo. Again, the experience cat. Talk to me, man. What do you see? On your way home, like when you're headed home, right? Because mm -hmm. you drive home sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get home different ways. Yeah. What do you? What, you're, you're taking that travel. You're coming out of the city. You're heading off to the to the burbs yeah. and the nice areas yeah, yeah, and things. Yeah. Think about what you see when you come across. When is that? What, what's the thing you appreciate the most when you're coming home? It's awesome because when I'm coming into the city, um, it is probably at its least chaotic um, point. And when I'm coming off the West Side Highway. I'm always coming in as the sun is rising, so I get to see the sun rise over the water, and it just reminds me about the beauty of this city. Um, and I do get to see all those Trump buildings. Fuck Trump. Yeah, I said mm -hmm. it. And, uh, you know, I, I do get to see, um, sometimes, depending too, man, sometimes when I'm coming into the city, I see cars crashed at that hour because, again, the sun is not up usually when I'm on my way here. So I always get this constant reminder that shit, that could have been me. I hope that person's okay be influential, be in, be impactful today, and be really genuine with every individual that you encounter. And I'm not lying. I see car accidents maybe two, three times a week when I'm going into the city, especially if it's a rainy day. Motherfuckers is just thinking that because no one's on the road, they can go crazy. Um, so I definitely see that. And on my way home, when I'm leaving the city, uh, I get a sense of peace because I'm able to be in the concrete jungle, but I'm I'm leaving and I'm going to a little bit more... A peaceful environment and it's not even just necessarily where I live but it's it's because I'm going home to Sage I'm going home to Chantel I'm going home to Avery I'm going all of my stress and cortisol starts to leave the further I get out of the city because I'm going to my place of peace um, so I think that's those are the things that I look for you know what I mean and those are the things that kind of come to me especially uh, the car crashes man I see them so often and it just makes me appreciate and value uh, my life you know and I take it for granted Mr. Jones, where's your moments of appreciation coming from? Uh, for me, I appreciate um, that duality between the, the, the wealth gap and that separation. So in a place like New York City as a metropolitan where everybody gets on the subway, you can see 
the people that are more well off and then you see like the homeless dude so like that moment when you see the the dude who's sleeping taking up three chairs and then you see the white woman sitting down with four hundred dollar shoes and leather pants and the 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 two thousand dollar bag you know what i mean it's just kind of taking that in like damn you've got literally both ends of the spectrum um I also look very heavily at the different fashion. Like, New York is a beautiful place where people people don't put on clothes, you get dressed. You know what I mean? And you see that in every different every different aspect. Like, it was a young lady on the subway today. Like, yo, she was fly. She had some ones on that I ain't never even seen. They were, like, all snakeskin. You know what I mean? And, and granted, I didn't approach her or say nothing to her, but, like, the look we exchanged was like, yo, you did that. You know what I mean? And that's all it really needed to be is that she was seeing... And I recognized it, you know, so stuff like that um, I really appreciate. And like you said, Brooklyn in general um, is just one of those places where it's always love, you know, Uh, whether it be the corner store, the deli, um, the people that you know. Like um, even when I walk to my studio, like I make sure that I know people in the neighborhood and I stop and talk to those people in the neighborhood and they know me. I know them. And that's all it really is, is love everywhere I go. That's what's up, homie. From the moment you come over the bridge, he going to show you where the pain and the poetry is. Mm-hmm. Letting everybody know the duality inside that spot. I appreciate the same way. Um, yeah, I'm cut from this cloth, and you know what the Brooklyn bias is. It's super strong on this side. You know, I got to see the beauty and the decay. I got to see the aspiration and the desperation and say that this is all a part of who I am, you know, because we understand where all of these places come from. You know, you never really are too far away from a reality that's not yours. And if you're not that far away from it, you can get closer to a better Mm -hmm. reality or you Mm -hmm. know that that worst reality is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And as the sun sets and the night falls... Mm -hmm. Okay. And them concubines call. <laughs> you got to make sure. I didn't, I didn't know where you was going with that. I was like, okay. You got to make you sure got you the bars, keep your bro. eyes open, man. Yeah, the streets yeah. is watching you. Listen, yeah. fam. I told you. Everybody should know. I'm proud of all my Jesus sign here. Y'all yeah. on notice, yeah. man. We're doing some shit over here, y'all. Trying to make this thing happen. I want to address one more thing real quick because yeah. I want to talk about what Kyle just called me out on and the truth of the fact that that yeah. is, is that he did give me the same advice that Troy gave me. And I was joking when I said it's not your lane, it's 100% your lane. The difference is that I wasn't ready to take that information. I, was t- I let myself be too busy. I fell for that same trap that we always say, hustle, 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 hustle. And that it wasn't hustling logically. I wasn't hustling with sense. Yeah. And sometimes you don't have the good fucking sense to listen to your brothers who know things that you don't yeah. know. Word. So the reality is, is I was too ignorant to hear the knowledge he was giving me at the time. I was open enough when Troy gave it to me, but I want to shout out both of y'all for giving me the same information and pay attention to myself for not being sensible enough to listen to it the first time I heard it. Listen, don't be like Corey. When the man-child speaks, y'all better listen to the man-child because he knows his shit. He know what he do. Mr. K.R. Jones? Hey, man. Listen. I, wise above your years, but I just don't know how old you are. Nobody knows. I don't <laughs> even know. But... I you mean, got, you got to cut his leg and count the rings. <laughs> when you, when I'm a, I'm gonna lay it out for you to play it out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like whenever you cash that check, that's on you. But at the end of the day, like I'm I'm not about to to pressure anybody into doing something. It's like yo, if if I give you the game, and you you know what I mean, you take it however you want. I'm not going. I have no attachment to the outcome of that game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can only drop knowledge and wait for people to learn. Right. Exactly. Hey so, man, we do it twice a week. Tuesdays and Thursdays. They trying to catch up now. Off the stream. Been trying to tell you. Long time coming. Go back in the archives, man. That's what Yoo-hoo. I've been doing. The episodes are just... <laughs> you gonna stop with the damn <laughs> By the way, that was not Troy Brooks. You know, it's not, that was not my tone. Don't do it. Just need y'all to know that shit came in right when I was speaking. It wasn't yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> y'all and Sin is going to have a whole different kind of situation. Yeah. Yo. Nah, man. I got to get them back for stealing my shine on my outfit. You y'all know did what have saying? the same fit. Yeah, yeah. I had the same fit on. How you going to stun on me and my shit, you who saying? wore it best? That's yeah. exactly what happened. Oh, that would have been a great. Yo, who, yeah. is the, who is the freshest janitor out here right now? All right, all right. Yo, when we put the video Yo. up, you gotta let us know. You gotta Who's let got us know. Who got the custodial sauce? Who came exactly. through with it the, way, the best way? <laughs> oh man, they got the custo gusto yeah. right there. That's oh. the fresh. The custo gusto. The custo gusto. Gusto couture. That's where it's coming it through. There it is. Oh man, <laughs> folks. Please pay attention to what we got. Make sure you like, listening, and subscribing. Again, if you couldn't make it to that live show, fret not. 
we might be able to get you a copy of that. You know, it's going to go hot in these streets. I feel like that might turn up a whole nother level, fellas. Again, the voice of this wellness revolution is here now. Mm. You're hearing these voices come through. People are starting to pay attention. The rumbling is happening in New, New-, in New York right now. I'm telling you right now, it ain't going to be the only place. We going to the top once again. It's been another fantastic episode of Off the Strength. I'm a trainer called Tony. K.R. Jones. TB Habanero Jefe. <laughs> That's another ad lib. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Yo, that one got me. That on, one got me. Yeah. That hot breath. Spicy. Yeah. That, yeah. Did he do that? This sounded like hot breath. Didn't That's it? what he's yeah. doing. Yeah. That's what he's feeling right Man, now. Man, your trainer court. <laughs> Peace and much love to y'all until next time. We'll see you soon. <laughs> the microphone stank now, boy. <laughs> Bro, when he does that, he's a habanero head fan. He does that.